So we are talking about the development of brain and this section will deal with the hind brain. Hind brain is the caudalmost part of the brain that is in contact with the spinal cord. We'll talk about <coughs> the development as to how the rhombencephalon forms the adult hind brain. Then we'll talk about the development of the functional columns of gray matter. And finally, the develop development of the fourth ventricle and the cerebellum. So here in the figure, you can see this is an adult brain. This is a forebrain. This section is the midbrain and this is the hind brain. So we're talking about the development of the hind brain. So the caudal part of the myelin cephalon. So we saw the rhombin cephalon divided into two parts, the metencephalon and the myelin cephalon. The metencephalon was the cranial part and the myelin cephalon was the caudal part. So we are talking about the caudal part and the caudal part of the caudal part. That is the caudal most part of the myelin cephalon. It has a central canal and it forms a close part of the medulla oblongata. We have talked about this before. Uh, this The myelin cephalon is responsible for the production of medulla oblongata. So now the medulla oblongata has two parts, a closed part as an op and an open part. Now, the caudalmost part of the myelin cephalon, <coughs> it has a central canal. And this portion of the myelin cephalon forms the closed part of the medulla oblongata. Now, the central canal expands as the cavity of the fourth canal or as the cavity of the fourth ventricle. And thus the rostral part of the myelin cephalon, it forms the open part of the medulla oblongata. So if we move from cranially to caudally, now the cranial part is forming the open part of the medulla oblongata. The caudal part, which has a central canal, forms the a caudal part of the medulla oblongata, the closed part of the medulla oblongata. Now the central canal, it eventually expands and forms the cavity of the fourth ventricle. Now, the floor of the fourth ventricle is derived from myelin cephalon um, and metencephalon both. So the floor is being formed by the myelin cephalon. Myelin cephalon is actually giving rise to it. And uh, there's contribution from metencephalon, that is the pons as well. On, the either si on either side of the midline, the floor consists of the basal, basal and uh, alar laminae. So laminae are actually the thickening of the mesoderm, which lie on either side of the floor of the rhombin cap or floor of the fourth ventricle, which is being formed by myelin cephalon in particular and contribution from the metencephalon. Now, <laughs> these two uh, condensations, uh, the basal and the alar laminae, are separated from each other by a longitudinal sulcus. This sulcus is known as the sulcus limitans. So what is sulcus limitans? Sulcus limitans is actually separating the basal and the alar laminae, which are two thickenings on, the, on either side of floor of the um, floor of the fourth ventricle, the floor of the fourth ventricle being formed by uh, myelin cephalon and the metan cephalon. So again in the figure, <coughs> this is an adult brain, this is the cerebral cortex, the forebrain showing the cerebrum, this is the thalamus, this is the hypothalamus. Then we have uh, the brain stem. The brain stem consists of the midbrain. Here you can see this in brown is the midbrain. And now this is the hindbrain. The hindbrain consisting of pons and cerebellum. The pon uh, pons and cerebellum, they arise from metencephalon. And the medulla oblongata, this in, uh, light blue is the medulla oblongata. And this arises from the myelin cephalon. So we are talking about the development of this area that is the hind brain. Now, the basal in the alar laminae, which we have talked about, we were separated by the sulcus limitans. 
similar to that of the spinal cord similar lamina are also present in the spinal cord they contain motor and sensory nuclei respectively so the basal uh, lamina contains motor nuclei and the alar lamina contains the sensory nuclei so the nuclei are arranged into longitudinal columns so why is that arrangement so that the information can easily be transferred between them so there's longitudinal arrangement of, um, of these nuclei so they supply the derivatives of the branchial arches that develop around this region so the branchial arches are giving off uh, um, giving off various structures in this region and these nuclei are also supplying these structures a special branch comes to lie between the somatic and the visceral columns of each lamina. So in this region, there's also a special branch that comes to lie between the somatic and the visceral columns of each lamina. Now, moving on, we have special somatic columns that appear in the most lateral part of the alar lamina. So alar lamina, it contained sensory nuclei. And there's special somatic column that appears in the more, most lateral part of the alar lamina. It receives impulses of special sensations that is hearing and balance. I know it's a bit dry and unconventional, but this is a three time, this is a developmental time in the embryo. There are rapid changes that are happening. And at this point in time, there's so many changes going on um, that the development proceeds rapidly at this point. So uh, just try to remember them, try to be with them, try to be with me at this point, and then you'll be able to understand it easily. Now, this is the arrangement of the columns that we were talking about. So we have the motor columns and we have the sensory columns. So the motor columns include the general vessel afferent in light blue, the special vessel afferent in purple and the somatic efferent in uh, red. So these are the motor columns which are derived from the functional columns of its basal plate. So basal plate gives rise to the motor column. There are three motor columns here and there are four sensory columns. So uh, these sensory columns are uh, derived from the uh, alar plate. So these are the general visceral afferent the special visceral afferent these are in dark green light green respectively then we have uh, general somatic afferent in orange and special somatic afferent in yellow the special somatic afferent is uh, the the segment that did, uh, that is developed later for special senses so this is the arrangement of the functional columns of the gray matter that, uh, that appears according to the nuclei from which it <coughs> develops. Let's talk about the development of fourth ventricle and the cerebellum. So <coughs> now the stretch part of the roof plate of the rhombic rhombocephalic vesicle forms the roof of the fourth ventricle. So this is the roof of the rhombin cephalon and this forms the roof of the fourth ventricle. Now let's see how that happens. This roof consists of a single layer of ependymal cells. This you can see in uh, blue. These are This is a single layer of ependymal cells which is covered by a vascular mesenchyme of the pia mater. This dotted line is the vascular mesenchyme of the pia mater. Now, pia mater, along with the covering of the ependymal cells, it forms the tela choroide. So, tela choroide is formed by the pia mater. So, there are two components, the pia mater and the ependymal cells. Now, owing to active <coughs> proliferation of vascular mesenchyme, there's very active proliferation of the vascular mesenchyme. Here you can see a tuft of capillaries. This is a tuft of capillaries. Um, now it invaginates the ventricular cavity. So the ventricular cavity is invaginated from the roof by a tuft of capillaries from the pia mater. Now these sac-like invaginations here, this, this sac-like invagination consists of the telochoroide 
and a tuft of capillaries <coughs> this forms the choroid plexus so this is how the choroid plexus is formed initially the roof of the rhombin cephalon forms the roof of the um, fourth ventricle now this roof of the rhombin cephalon consists of a single layer of ependymal cells which is covered on the outside by the mesenchyme of the pia mater there is a rapid proliferation of blood vessels in the mesenchyme which penetrate into the cavity or try to penetrate into the cavity of the fourth ventricle the penetration into the cavity causes <coughs> the telar cordae covered projections of these uh, tuft of capillaries, these uh, tila cordae, uh, choroidy covered um, projections of uh, tuft of capillaries into the fourth ventricle are known as the choroid plexus. So here you can see uh, this is the choroid plexus, these are the tila choroidy, this is the ependymal layer, this is the pia meta. So moving on, now let's talk about the development of cerebellum. So now the dorsolateral parts of the alar lamina uh, of the <laughs> metencephalon, they extend medially. So there is medial extension and there is dorsal extension to form the rhombic lips. Here you can see this is the rhombic lip. These are formed by the dorsal extension. There is dorsal and medial extension from the metencephalon. So this is the rhombic lip. This is the precursor of the cerebellum. So they meet and fuse in the midline over the roof of the fourth ventricle and they grow dorsally to form the cerebellum. So they finally meet and fuse in the midline here. They meet and fuse in the midline and they grow over the cavity of the fourth ventricle and they grow dorsally to form the cerebellum. This is the adult cerebellum being formed. Now the marginal layer of the basal plates of the metencephalon, uh, it expands considerably. <coughs> so there's a rapid expansion of the marginal layer of the basal plates of the metencephalon. They serve as a bridge of nerve fibers which connect the cerebral cortex and the cerebellar cortex. So there's a connection between the cerebral cortex and the cerebellar cortex. This is through a marginal layer of basal plates. These, derive, these are derived from the <coughs> metencephalon. So this is, about, this is all about the development of the cerebellum. So in this section, we talked about the development of the hind brain. We saw how rhombencephalon formed the pons, the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. I hope you liked and understood this section. For further sections, keep watching scardia.com.